Hello, Facebook. I'm Alex Morton, pastor of Firebrand Fellowship, and I'm here with you tonight coming to you live with a message on the spirit of religion, or as others refer to it at times, the religious spirit. I'm going to wait here for a few minutes for people to jump on, but I just want to welcome you. I have a fresh message for you about this demonic spirit. And I just praise God for all that he's doing in the earth, all that he's doing in America, in our land, in our country. I thank God that we live in the greatest nation on this earth. And, you know, it was it all came about through divine providence, through God's sovereign plan, through God's sovereign, uh, his sovereignness, his sovereignty, you know, um, God put it all together. He brought this country into existence and he's going to see us through regardless of what happens, regardless of what comes. Hello, Jagan. Thank you for joining us, brother. Um, I also want to say, you know, there's a lot of you out there that want to see Donald Trump uh, come and, or stay for a second term and continue to be our president and you know, I speak out about this and I pray for the same. I pray that he comes through and I, there's been many prophecies that have come forth that he will stay in office. But I also want to let you know and prepare you that if Biden wins, that just means that our redemption draws near. That just means that our redemption is even closer than it ever has been. And it, there are there are greater tribulations to come. There is greater struggle and suffering to come for the body of Christ, Jesus makes that clear. He says, all men will hate you because of me. And we're getting closer to the time where certain things, certain events, certain uh, things that are laid out in the Bible are coming to pass, are going to come to pass, that are prophecies that are going to be fulfilled. But we are not to be afraid. And I just speak peace over you right now. No fear. No fear. May God's peace just go out right now and just give you uh, more calmness right now in your hearts in the name of Jesus. May God's joy, streams of joy, peace, and provision wash over you right now, Lord. I just pray that by your spirit and by your blood, you would wash those who are watching, Lord, that your uh, streams of joy, that your grace would just wash over them like waves right now, Father God. Because right now, there's just so much... Um, so much chaos and confusion, and I always speak about these things because it's something that's on my mind, on my heart. So many people's minds are twisted up because of the things that are happening. You know, the news is is promoting lies right now for the most part, except one station that I know of. And you can agree with my, my opinion, and maybe you disagree, and that's fine too. I still love you, and I still want to see you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that he is Lord, that he is Savior, and that he's our all in all. You need to look no further if you're looking for peace, if you're looking for security, if you're looking for salvation. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and there's no other way. Some people will say there's there's all these different roads to heaven. There's many ways that you can get there. I would say no. There's one way, and his name is Jesus. So as we just wait a minute or two here, I'm going to pray that the Lord anoints me to speak this message, to preach his word and to preach his gospel. So please join with me in prayer now. Father God, I thank you for giving me this time, for giving me this message. Lord, may I speak your words and not my own, Father. Lord, as I just speak faith, Lord God, comfort those who are watching. Lord, bring peace. Lord, bring joy. Bring hope into the hearts of those who are hopeless right now. Those who feel like they're lost. May they be found in you, Lord. As people are watching from India and from all across the world, God, I ask that they tune in and they just uh, are touched immediately with your anointing, God. And as we speak, as I speak about the spirit of religion tonight, which is a spirit, a demonic spirit that tries to choke out the anointing and reject the anointing of God on a person's life. Lord, I pray that you flood in with your anointing, with your glory, and you bring them into the alignment with the word of God, that they would be saved, that they would be brought back if they are backslidden, and that they are changed. 
completely tonight, Lord. May they never be the same. We thank you, Lord. Help us to hold on to the truth that we already know, the truth of your word, and help us to reject the lies of the enemy that are coming every single day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hello, Sean. Thank you for joining us. There's a couple that have been jumping on. Uh, hello, Firebrand friends and family. We're going to get started now with the spirit of religion or the religious spirit. Okay, they go by this. This spirit goes by two different names, the spirit of religion and the religious spirit. So let's dive in. So as many of you already know, there's the Holy Spirit. There's God's good spirits, which are his angels. And then there's demonic spirits, which are fallen angels. The angels that left heaven with Lucifer, right? The, the, uh, one, the one third of heaven's angels that followed Lucifer and fell from heaven. Those are demons. This religious demon rejects the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This spirit has been at work for thousands of years. And it operates through a religious mindset rooted in rules and regulations. Hello, Garrison. Thank you for joining us, brother. It's been a long time. Our God is a supernatural God. But the spirit of religion's goal is to set up a stronghold in your mind that causes you to operate and think only in the natural realm about things relating to God. Okay? I grew up in a church and I grew up in going to different churches that were dead. I'm just being real, you know. Um, when I preach, a lot of times people get mad. They get they get frustrated because they, they don't believe necessarily the things I believe about God. But I formed my own theology. I let God speak to me. I left myself open to the word of God and to the spirit of God and nothing else. And I let the Lord minister to me. And I pray that that's what you're doing. I pray that you allow the Lord to come in and minister to you through his word and through his spirit and nothing else. Okay. Um, I'm very passionate about deliverance because I love pe seeing people get set free. People walk around in oppression and bondage when they don't have to. But I'm telling you, this religious spirit is a deadly thing because it rejects the anointing of God. And I grew up in dead churches where they taught me things off of the pages of the Bible, off the Word of God. and But they didn't tell me about the Holy Spirit. They didn't tell me about the anointing because they didn't know. Most of them had no idea that there was this power of the Holy Spirit that could come through and transform you. All right. See, a lot of people are trying to change on their own. They're trying to change their own lives. But if you submit yourself to God, if you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit, he can change you in just a moment in the mighty name of Jesus. So, for example, when I talk about this religious spirit bringing us into a place where we're only in the natural realm when we're thinking about the things of God. So say a brother comes to me and he says he has a lot of back pain. Um, he has some slipped discs, something along those lines. He has these back problems. And I say, well, God wants to heal you right now in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says anything I ask in Jesus name will be done. But he says to me, well, I don't believe that. I believe God is good, but I don't believe that he can heal me. All right. Say just just say that this happens. I don't believe that God can heal me, but I believe a doctor can heal me. I believe a doctor is the only one who can help me in this condition. No, that's a natural mindedness. That's a spirit of religion that is that is doubling up with that unbelief. And those two are forming a combination here where that man is in a place of unbelief, but he's also being manipulated by the spirit of religion into thinking God is not supernatural, into thinking God cannot heal today. He cannot deliver. He cannot uh, make that spine line up in the name of Jesus because he can. And I'm here to tell you that God is a supernatural God. He delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from severe depression to the point where I was suicidal. And I almost took my own life. He can deliver you. He can touch you. He can change you in just a moment. Romans 8.14 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. But the issue that arises is we can get so focused on obeying the commandments of the law that we forget to set the supernatural power of God is at work in us already. Bringing us into alignment 
with these commandments. You see, when the Holy Spirit is flowing and moving in us, he's going to give us the strength and everything that we need to fulfill the commands of God. But if we're walking in the flesh, if, we, if it's all up here and not in here and not in your spirit, then it's going to be very difficult to line up with those commandments and to fulfill them, to walk them out in your life. Galatians 5.18 says this, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Okay, very short and simple scripture. If you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So let me say this one more time. The religious spirit wants you under the law. But do you know who is actually bound by the law? Who's actually bound by the law if it's not us? It's Satan and his demons. They are bound by the law. An entry point through a broken commandment, through a broken law. If you break a law or a commandment in the Bible, okay, or in, in your own life is what I'm saying, the enemy is going to try to use that to say, okay, I found an entry point. I can enter through that sin. And if you don't repent and stay clean before God, the enemy is going to use that to his advantage to get in there, to stay in there, and to set up shop. So let's go together to Mark 7, verses 1 through 9, and that's going to be um, our main text for tonight. Mark 7, 1 through 9, we're going to read that together. So this is just one of many times where Jesus uh, faces off with the Pharisees and the scribes. So I'll just give you a minute to get there. Mark 7 verses, Mark chapter 7 verses 1 through 9. Pedro, thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you for how good you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are supernatural, that you bring life, Lord where we were once dead, where our spirits were dead. We were spiritually dead men walking, but we are alive now. We are alive in his spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your power, for your love, for your anointing. Okay, Mark 7, 1 through 9. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the traditions of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they had received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written? This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the traditions of men. The watching, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. He said to them, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. He gave them a mouthful there. He told them, you're holding to the traditions of men and not the commandments of God. And in how many churches are we doing that today? Let's think about that for a moment. So here we see that the Pharisees and the scribes were more interested in whether Jesus and his disciples washed their hands than in the miracles they were performing. In the sight of the blind being restored, in men being risen from the dead, okay, in demons being cast out, in all these healing signs, wonders, and miracles, they were more interested in whether they washed their hands and whether than whether they performed these miracles and the power of God was on it and they knew the power of God was made manifest, the kingdom of God was touching earth, and they knew this, yet they were more interested in the washing of hands. All right, and look, you may get offended at this, but you know what? I just got to speak the truth and I got to speak as the spirit leads. And right now in a lot of churches, they're more worried about the mass. They're worried about more worried about whether you wash your hands than they are about the power of God. All right. Yeah, COVID's real, but the power of God 
is even more real. Hallelujah. And he can heal us. He can touch us. He can set us free from every sickness, disease, and infirmity. And I want you to believe that. I want you to know that. And I'm going to preach faith until that faith goes through and touches the other side of the screen. Until it's poured out. Until the anointing of God is poured out. Because my words can do nothing. They can accomplish nothing without the power of God. Without the Holy Spirit moving through them. So they wanted to find fault according to their tradition. So they could accuse Jesus of breaking the law. So are you making the connection? A religious spirit was operating through those religious leaders. They were looking for an entry point in the same way demons look for an open door. They knew if they could find a fault in him, they could put him on trial and have him executed, which eventually they did. But I want you to realize this, that Jesus offered himself up. Don't you ever think that Jesus couldn't avoid his own death. I don't ever want you to think that. He offered himself up freely as a sacrifice for us because of the love that he had for every single one of us. And he loves you so much. If you're out there and you're suffering, you're in depression, you're in oppression, I want you to know Jesus loves you so much and he wants to touch you tonight. He wants you to experience who he truly is. He wants you to experience God. So Jesus called the Pharisees and scribes hypocrites because they had laid aside the commandments of God to hold on to the traditions of men. Hey, Brian, thank you for joining us. So Jesus tells us in Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40, that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. I bring this up to help you understand that all the commandments of God flow from these two. Jesus hated the traditions of men and he hated to see religion without relationship. Every commandment points toward God's love for his people. A religious mindset offers lip service and vain repetition, while relationship with Jesus produces a love that compels us to meet the needs of others. Religion alone is dead. But God's anointing, His Spirit, is at work in us every day. Have you ever attended a dead church? Did you grow up in a dead church? Or maybe you're in a dead church right now and you don't even realize it. The spirit of religion promotes legalism. The spirit of religion works to set up strongholds in spirit-filled churches to choke out the anointing. This spirit opposes anyone who moves in a prophetic anointing or an apostolic anointing. In these dead churches, the spirit of religion has been invited in. But the problem is the spirit of God has not. Dead churches many times will say, well, the gifts of the spirit are no longer operational. Well, the last time I checked in my own life, they're operating very well. And in the lives of many of my brothers and sisters, they speak in tongues, they prophesy, signs wonders, miracles, and healings, uh, deliverances are taking place every day. Okay, I've seen these things manifested for myself. If I didn't, I wouldn't be able to speak on them. I wouldn't be able to speak on them with confidence and tell you they're actually taking place. These things are happening. And there's an anointing that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms and that changes everything it comes into contact with. Oh, thank you, Lord. We praise you for that, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you see, when you resist, resist the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you're resisting the Holy Spirit himself. Think about that. If you're resisting the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you're resisting God himself, the Holy Spirit himself. The spirit of religion resists and blocks prophecy. It hates an apostolic anointing and it attempts to block revelation. This spirit wants us to condemn ourselves because we don't live up to the law, but we're not under the law. We're under grace. Again, I'm going to say it. The spirit wants us to condemn ourselves because we don't live up to the law and we never will. That's why we're under grace. That's why the Holy Spirit is operating in us that we could fulfill the law, that we could fulfill 
the commandments of God. And yes, we're still going to stumble, but we need to stay clean before God and repent daily. Repentance isn't one and done. It's an everyday process. So this spirit wants you to believe you're saved because you said a prayer, not because you truly committed your life to Jesus as Lord and Savior. All right, and this spirit can operate as a territorial spirit, meaning it can operate as a principality that's set up in a region to take out the body of Christ in that region, at least to choke out the anointing, okay? The enemy knows that he can't stop Christians from being Christians, but the enemy will target churches where the anointing is powerful, where the anointing of God is strong, where people know that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is real and it's moving and it's and it's bringing deliverance, it's bringing healing, it's bringing things into uh, fruition because of the faith that's being manifested, okay? The Holy Spirit moves when we release faith. We release faith and the Holy Spirit shows up. God shows up. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. So this spirit works together with Jezebel to gain control over a region. Okay, let me say that again. The spirit of religion works together with the spirit of Jezebel to gain control over a region. And I'm all too familiar with these spirits. So see, the spirit of Jezebel is about manipulation and control. And she's playing a big part in what's happening now with all the regulations on COVID, um, with keeping people in fear, instilling fear in them, and having this control where it's like, okay, I feel like I have a little bit of freedom. No, I'll come back. We're going to keep you here. We're going to tell you to do this. We're going we're gonna to make sure you, that you don't do that. That's a spirit of control and manipulation. But Jezebel takes it a step further, and she mixes that with religion. All right, realize that the spirit of Jezebel was... It is religious, okay? She, the, the actual woman that this demon first inhabited was very religious because Jezebel, as a woman in the Bible, um, was a worshiper of the Baals, which were false gods. She built altars to them. She, uh, she offered sacrifices to them, and she worshiped these false gods, which were actually demons. All right, if you want to know more about that study, the life of Jezebel, and find out just how wicked she was. She was the wicked queen under or or uh, with K King Ahab, who was one of the most wicked men who ever lived. So I want you to understand the beginnings and the origins of this devil and of the devil that it operates with. We have to gain a greater understanding of what it is we're up against, the strategies of the enemy and how he operates. All right, so the spirit of religion and the spirit of Jezebel come together to try to gain control over a region. And tonight we're going to pray that the spirit of religion breaks off of this region of Delaware County in which we're living, in which I'm living, I should say. And I'm, we're going to pray that it breaks off your region, wherever you are, you know, whether it's in another state, another county, another country. The spirit of religion wants to gain control so it can choke out the anointing of God on your life, on your ministry, and on your region and country. We're just going to be completely real and say it wants to choke out the, the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, wherever it is. It wants to keep us under that oppression. And at the end of this, I, you know, I'm leaving an hour now for my live message. I preach and then I allow for questions and comments because I want you to ask your questions. And I will answer them to the best of my ability. I'll give you scriptures if I'm able to, or I'll study it out and send you uh, a direct message. But make sure you ask the questions that you want to ask. Make sure that you put it out there because I don't want you to go without knowing uh, more information and having a greater understanding of what it is I'm preaching on each week. Okay, And then at 8 p.m. we're going to have our live Zoom session if you want to be a part of that. Um, just send me a message, a direct message, and I'll send you a link. So anyway, the enemy wants to keep us under oppression in any way that he can, whether it's through depression, whether it's through anxiety, whether it's through a spirit of fear, the spirit of religion, the spirit of Jezebel, whatever it is. There's a lot of demonic forces at work out there, but praise God, they are no greater than the power of God. The power of God through Jesus Christ is greater than any 
demonic stronghold, spirit, or principality. And I want you to be encouraged tonight in that, hallelujah, that we serve a God that's above all other gods. We serve a God that's sovereign. We serve a God, um, you know, and, and God just gave me this image today as I was thinking, God is a God who, when you mess up, he comes right behind you and he says, I offer you grace. I offer you forgiveness. I offer you the chance to clean this thing up and allow me to change you, transform you, and wash you with my spirit and with my blood. All right. So let's live under the grace that God has purchased for us through the shed blood of his son on the cross. Let's live in that grace and not under the law, not feeling bound, not feeling like, you know, every little thing that I do, I'm messing up, I'm condemned. Oh, I'm such a I'm such a loser. I'm such a such a dirty, filthy person. No, God wants to make you clean tonight. If he could change me and t and take me from being a drug addict, a drug dealer, um a person that was you know, living in blatant sin and not caring about a thing, not caring about my very own life, that he can take you, transform you and make you clean, make you like a newborn baby, fresh and pure. He can make you that. And maybe you knew Jesus at one point. Maybe you've turned away. Maybe your heart's been heavy because you're living in sin now. Maybe that's the case. But I'm going to pray right now that the Lord delivers you from a spirit of religion and any other demonic force that you're under. I, I pray that the Lord is going to, uh, and I believe that the Lord is going to break you out of any sickness and he's going to heal you if you need healing. So right now I'm going to say a prayer over you and then I'm going to open it up to questions and whatever you want to comment about. So just join with me in prayer right now as we pray to break the spirit of religion over this region and over your lives, whoever's watching or will watch this message. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. I break the power of the spirit of religion over this region in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of religion that has set itself up over Delaware County, and we break its power by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus right now. We rebuke you, devil. Flee to another territory because this territory is taken for the name of Jesus. We are God's people and we declare and decree that we will be free from oppression, depression, religion, and all the things that bind us, all the things that have held us for far too long, we're free now in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of depression off of you. I break the spirit of religion off of you. I break the spirit of Jezebel off of you. I break the spirit of confusion and delusion off of you. I break the spirit of control manipulation off of you. I break the spirit of Ahab off of you. If you've, you're a weakened leader in the name of Jesus, that Jezebel has found a way in. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the deliverance you're bringing. I pray that God releases his divine anointing, his divine virtue in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, release your virtue now to heal those who are sick, to heal those who have infirmities, to heal those who have back pain, who have migraines in the name of Jesus. I believe that the Lord is healing cancer now in the name of Jesus through his anointing. I believe that the Lord is, is turning around those with depression right now that have had severe depression their entire lives almost, or for a long period of time. I believe that the Lord is breaking people out of depression right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for that freedom. We thank you for the joy that you bring. Oh, God, help us to stay in alignment with your word and in alignment with the truth. God, keep our minds from the lies, Lord. We just put on the helmet of salvation right now that tells us, that, that speaks to us, we are saved, that speak to us, speaks to us, we are not condemned, but we are saved, we are made clean, we are pure in the sight of God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for what you've done on the cross. I thank you that you died on the cross, that you rose from the grave, that you are Lord. Now, I just want to give you an opportunity to receive Christ if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have not committed your life to him, I want to give you an opportunity to do just that. So follow with me in this prayer if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now. Father God, just repeat after me, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me, Lord, for anything I've done. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus, that 
rose from the grave. I believe that you rose from the grave, Jesus. And I believe that you are Lord. I commit my life and my will to you. And I will follow you for all of my days. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. And if you said that prayer, please contact me. Let me know that you said it. Let me know if you gave your life to Jesus or you gave your life back to Jesus. I would really like to know. I would really like to pray with you and send you some materials to help equip you. But anyone that's still on there, please send your comments and questions right now as I sit here for a couple of minutes and just wait. And if there's no questions, I'll cut it off in just a couple of minutes. Does anybody have any questions about the spirit of religion? This demon. Or does anybody have any questions about their church? You may be wondering, is your church um, bound by the spirit of religion? You may be wondering, is your church a dead church? As, as some of the churches that I'm speaking about, I, of course, I haven't named names. I would never do that. But maybe you're wondering, is my church a dead church? Just ask your questions. Um, please, you can ask me about this subject or anything else that's on your heart right now. Hey, Donna, thank you for joining us. We're kind of just wrapping up now. We're talking about the spirit of religion, which is the demon that wants to choke out the anointing of God, that wants to choke out the Holy Spirit of God. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me uh, and just send me a message right now that I can see it live. If you have any questions about Jesus, about deliverance, about the spirit of religion, about your church, about whatever is on your heart or is on your mind, you can ask me questions or you can leave comments. I'm just going to give you another minute or two. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm just going to praise you as I'm waiting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Like I said, your deliverance and your redemption draw near. They draw near. Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the grave. He is Lord. He is Lord. And if you're not convinced of it, ask him to convince you of it. Ask God who he really is and he will show you. If he's sovereign, which I know he is, if he's sovereign, he's going to find a way for you to know who he is. He knows exactly what you need to see. He knows exactly what you need to hear because he's a good, good father. And he's not going to allow you to perish if you don't want to perish. If you want to know who he is, he's going to make a way for you to know. I can guarantee you that. All right, doesn't seem like anybody has any questions, so I'm going to wrap it up. And I'm not sure what time it is. I don't have a clock with me and I can't see the time while I'm live here. But at 8 p.m., we're going to start our Zoom session to pray and to discuss the subject of this message tonight, which was the spirit of religion. Thank you so much for joining me, Firebrand friends and family and those who join guests. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. God bless.